Welcome back to Bazooka Kickboxing and MMA. In today's episode, I'm gonna talk about my three favorite kickboxers of all time. In today's episode, I'm gonna talk about three of my favorite kickboxers of all time. And when you talk about my favorite kickboxers, it has to be in the era of K1 heavyweight kickboxing, where that's where it was at its pinnacle. To see the size of the events in Japan was just something amazing and really inspired me. For those who know my story, um, Gary Goodridge used to train here at Bazooka Kickboxing and MMA with my coach, Paul Minhas. So I got to experience Gary Goodridge in his prime as a superstar. Seeing him coming in, training, and hearing his stories about Japan from Gary as well as my coach really inspired me to want to go to Japan, which I later got to accomplish at Glory 13. So that was the goal set in my mind from Gary Goodridge, but watching these guys compete at that level and seeing the superstar level uh, they were able to compete at just inspired me and a lot of kickboxers at the time. So let's get into my favorite. My favorite kickboxer probably has to be based on my style and watching the excitement, Ernesto Hoost. No surprise because of his low kicks. Mr. Perfect, Mr. Low Kick, right? You've seen the way he systematically broke people down with his punches, especially that left hook low kick. It was just beautiful to see. But the way Ernesto throws that kick is just so much better. He throws it with a nice whipping style, a good cut down, and he was really damaging a lot of people with it. So was he the first to be known for the low kicks? Yeah, he was probably the, one of the more populars, but guys like Rob Common before were really good with it. You know, Ramon Deckers, we saw a lot of guys use the low kick, but to me, it was Ernesto that really set it apart, and it's with the combinations, with that left hook, flowing to that kick was just amazing. And his excitement of fights, one of his favorite fights is with Andy Hu when they go into this double extra round, which makes it exciting. So. That leads into one of my second favorite kickboxers of all time. It's Andy Hu. Andy Hu came from a traditional martial arts background, so we saw him fight in Kyokushin. And at the time, a lot of Japan and K1 was taking a lot of Kyokushin fighters and transitioning them into kickboxing because Kyokushin fighters, if you see this style of fighting, it's all about durability and that tough armor by punching and the constant kicking. You get a lot of tough fighters out of that. So in Japan, they were grooming Kyokushin fighters 4K1 kickboxing, and we got to see that amazing style in Andy Hoog. That toughness, the durability, the way he stood in there, and ultimately known for, one, his axe kicks that were just damaging, and his spinning heel kicks to the leg, right? We saw him spin and finish guys with spinning heel kicks to the leg and those nasty axe kicks that he was. And if you watch a lot of his history and his building, he was into strength training. He was into a lot of cool stuff at the time. So Andy Hu, from the excitement to his fights, from his old Kyokushin background, is definitely uh, in the top three for me. Now the third one, there's a lot of fighters that pop in and out, but uh, thinking for this video, I really had to think what was one thing that really stood out in this fighter that I like to use? And I have to go with my third one being Peter Ertz. And Peter Ertz, uh, the lumberjack, is just a tall, good, durable fighter who still basically competes today. I think as of last year, he was still competing. But he had these push-off head kicks that were just amazing to watch. So, I mean, his the height, the size of him, the way he would get those head kicks was just amazing to watch. And the excitement he's brought for so many years is just inspiring. I mean, it was really difficult to pick three because also there's a time of the K1 Max fighters, the Masatos, the Giorgio Petrosians, you know, the Mike Zambides. Those are all fighters that are very close for hitting those top three for me. Then there's also even older kickboxers that I mentioned. The Ramon Deckers has to be one of the most inspiring, you know, Muay Thai fighters of all time. And I mean, he went into Thailand, showed himself um, being a Dutch fighter, and now knowing his father and his brother uh, makes me that more connected uh, to Ramon Deckers. But even just as, a, as a, a professional coming up, people used to see me fight, and especially in my Muay Thai fights, I'll be, I got split open with elbows full of blood, and I was just kept going with my combinations and low kicks, and people after my fights would say, you remind me of Ramon Deckers, and that to me was one of the biggest compliments that I received in my career. So there's a lot of you know, names that can go back and forth, but even older, I'm gonna go even one of the older steps back to one of my favorites to watch, and he's actually a Canadian kickboxer by the name of Jean-Yves Terrio. And Jean-Yves Terrio was a, a kickboxer of above the waist. 
And above the waist kickboxing is a little bit different. And you'll notice, some people might say it's actually a little bit harder. Because um, when you talk about boxing, they talk about the sweet science because you have two weapons to hit only half of the body. So with above the waist kickboxing, you really have to use your kicks. You, you do those kick punch styles. You have to be a little bit more creative because less real estate. You gotta think one low kick helps you set up punches. There's more area and real estate for you to connect with. So Jean-Yves Terrio, the way he used his kicks in his boxing was just phenomenal to see. So that's really old school at that time. So there you go. Some of the names that I really look up to in the sport of kickboxing. And again, it can keep going further. I'm a big fan of the sport. And uh, even the newer guys, even when I was competing, my favorite had to have been the Gokan Sakis, the Tyrone Spong. So there's still so many names to add, but we're talking about my all-time favorite and my all-time favorite have to be Ernesto Hoost, Andy Hoog, and most likely Peter Eretz. So hope you enjoyed today's video, and hopefully I'll give you different types of stories that go with my different fighters. And I'll even put a picture up now of one of my favorite pitchers when I first got signed to Glory and went to Japan. I actually got to fight on the same card as Peter Eretz and take a picture with him, which was one of my favorite pitchers from my Glory time. So, hope you enjoyed today's episode, and make sure you continue to support the channel sponsors, Hayabusa, by going to HayabusaFight.com, Perfect Sports Nutrition, use code Bazooka20 to get 20% off your order, Rouge Care for red light therapy, and for Bazooka Sports and merchandise, head over to BazookaShop.com.